One chapter was entitled, Will the Real Archie Bunker Please Stand Up? Eloise James was amazed as Archie Bunker expressed his real views on a TV interview. They seemed so contrary to the views he expressed as Archie Bunker. Whitney was not surprised. He replied, I liked Archie Bunker. He expressed well the ideas that so many Americans held at that time. Eloise nodded affirmatively. And Whitney continued, I don't know how the program stayed on as long as it did. No other programs attacked the social issues which afflicted our society as well as all in the family. Again, Eloise had to agree, but she had another viewpoint. Archie Bunker expressed all the anger and frustration that was rampant in a large percentage of our population. He did. That is why he was effective. No one else was saying that. Both remained silent for some time, reflecting on what had been said. Finally, Whitney broke the silence. Archie expressed all the anger, frustration, fear, and doubt of a large percentage of our population. But he was not in control. He was a victim of his own fear, his own prejudice. He always seemed to be tormented, out of control. I never quite saw it in that light, but you're right, was Eloise's response. Again, that reflected the feeling of many Americans. Remember the times. It was only 25 years after World War II. We won that war, won it big, but we were quickly into Korea and Vietnam. And we had to fight our own economic and political structures. This was just after the struggle for civil rights. Women were becoming more aggressive for their rights. Even abortion was becoming an issue. Eloise replied, conservatives were becoming more vocal. They blamed every evil in our society on the liberal elements of our society. Just like Archie Bunker, Whitney replied. By now the interview with Archie was over. Whitney got up and flicked off the TV and said, I don't watch TV very often. Almost a third of the time is taken up with commercials and the vast majority are for drugs and lawyers. Again, Eloise James had to agree. She hadn't said that much, but she was intrigued by the insights of, of Whitney. However, his reference to conservatives pricked her mind. And she said, you mentioned conservatives. You know, we need to reevaluate that word. What does it mean to be conservative? What is it we want to conserve? She paused as if she expressed, expected some response from Whitney. When he did not respond, she went on. I consider myself both liberal and conservative. I am conservative when it comes to values. I want to protect the things I value. I am liberal, which means free, when it comes to structures. I am willing to use whatever structures will help preserve the values I hold. Most conservatives think we have to protect the structure, like somehow those structures will preserve the values. Good distinction was Whitney's response. Using the distinction of Eloise James, he asked, was Archie Bunker liberal or conservative? Blatantly conservative. Whitney replied, that was the role he played. The interview we just saw showed that was not his real view. 
Somehow I don't think he could have played that role so well if those were his real views. Again, Eloise was amazed at this insight, but somehow she could not understand the logic of Whitney, and she expressed that doubt. Whitney replied, if Archie totally believed what he said, he would never have been able to play that role for so many years. Very frequently he was forced to eat his words, but he never admitted that he was wrong. He kept on the same track, almost as if he were a puppet, and somebody else was pulling his strings. He certainly was a puppet, Eloise agreed. Whitney went on, but he still spoke the truth. Remember the opening song, Didn't Need No Welfare State, Everybody Pulled His Weight. When did we become a welfare state? Eloise had never asked that question. She had no answer. Whitney continued, we became a welfare state when commonwealth was merged into commonwealth, when two perfectly good words which expressed the common human reality were merged into a single word. Th that word expresses how we began to view life. When commonwealth was no longer the water, the earth, the air, the land, the trees, the heat and light of the sun, we became a welfare state depended on those who control the commonwealth. What does that have to do with Archie Bunker and with me, Eloise wondered. Whitney replied, Archie Bunker understood well that he was no longer in control. He saw well that much of that loss of control was due to government intervention. He was never able to probe into the role of multinational corporations and multinational banks in moving the government into the position which protected the interests of big business and did so at the expense of the commonwealth. Archie never realized that once air, water, and the other elements were owned, they no longer existed for the common good, but were subject to profit. They were no longer commonwealth. Eloise responded, that's not a very easy concept to understand. No, especially since we've been taught the opposite for several hundred years. My Native American ancestors understood it well, though. Whitney paused and then he concluded, even though they understood, they were unable to overcome the economic forces which forced them to move in a different direction and view life in a different way.